Hey guys, today we're moving on to talking about um, special factors when, uh, or special cases when factoring. So we know how to do the X puzzles, we know how to do grouping, we know how to do GCF. Um, here are some special cases that might arise and it has to do with um, perfect squares. So if we remember, perfect squares is a number times itself um, that gives you the number inside the square root, right? So um, like inverses, the inverse of adding would be subtracting, inverse of subtracting is adding, inverse of multiplication is division, inverse of division is multiplication. The inverse of a squaring a number, so to the second power, would be to by taking the square root. Okay, so some um, squares we have is one squared, whoops, come here, which is one times one, which gives us one, right? Two squared, I have two, two times. Two times two gives me four. So remember this when we did um, exponent rules, we've got a base and a power, so you take the base two times, so three times three gives me nine. It is not three times two, that is not what's happening. You take the base, however many times the exponent says, a little baby number, so three two times gives me nine. I've got four two times, so four times four gives me 16, right? Five times five gives me 25. Okay, then I've got six two times, so six times six is 36. Seven times seven, 49. Eight, whoop, eight times eight is 64. Nine times nine is 81, and then 10 times 10 is 100. Okay. So those are that's squaring. If I were to do the inverse, remember the opposite, like inverse of adding and subtracting. If I did the inverse of squaring 6 squared, the opposite would be square root of 36, which is equal to 6. So it's opposite of what we just did. You're saying what times itself gives me 36. So what we're doing today is difference of perfect squares. Um, difference means to subtract. And then perfect squares, um, both parts of your factoring have to be perfect squares. Um, some examples might be like number above would be 49, right? 49 is a perfect square. X squared is a perfect square because that's like saying X times X. So the square root of X squared would just be X. And then 4X squared is also an example because I can take the square root of 4 and X squared. Okay, so uh, we can write in the form A squared minus B squared. We can factor it out and it would be a minus b times a plus b. Those would be our two binomials. So if there's not a coefficient in front of this a, it makes it real easy to do. So if we look here, at number one, I've got to take the square root of s. Ooh. Let's just redraw that. The square root. Uh, I'm struggling today. Come on. Of s squared is just s, right? Because you're saying what times itself gives me s squared. Well, an s times s gives me s squared. Then I'm, that's this term here. Then I also have to do it to this other term, the 49. So square root of 49. Well, I know that 7 times 7 is 49. So then when I go to write it, like we said above, I'm going to take s minus 7 and s times s plus 7. And that's it. You just take the square root of both parts and then do one binomial where you're subtracting them and then one binomial where you're adding them. 
that's how easy it is. So if we look at the second one, t squared, I've got the square root of t squared. Well, t times t gives me t squared, so t would be the answer to that one. And then 81, square root of 81 is 9. So then when I do that, I take t minus 9 times t plus 9, which gives me my two binomials that equal t squared minus 81. Okay, same thing here. I've got 16. It's just a reverse order. 16. Square root of 16 is 4. 4 times 4 gives me 16. Then I do the same thing over here. X squared. If I take the square root of x squared, I know x times x gives me x squared. So then I do 4 minus x times 4 plus x, which gives me that polynomial up there. So those aren't bad. Those are pretty easy, right? Not terrible. Not terrible. Um, now when we start putting a coefficient, we got to do the same thing. So again, we're going to take the term. We're taking this whole thing. So it's square root of 4g squared. Well, I've got to take the square root of 4, which is 2, and the square root of g squared, which is g, right? So we've got 2g this time. And then this term's like what we've been doing, square root of 25. So 5 times 5 gives me 25. Then I take my two terms, 2g minus 5 and 2g plus 5. And there's my answer. The next one, do the same thing. Just take this whole thing, square root of 36h squared. Well, square root of 36 is 6. And then square root of h squared is h. Square root of 121, that one's fun, y'all know that one. 11 times 11 gives me 121. And then do the same thing that I've been doing. 6h minus 11 times 6h, maybe 6h plus 11. Well, let's do one more of these, just for funsies. Let's see if we can do it without writing everything down. So, square root of 81 is 9. I'm going to do these first. I know I'm going to have a minus, a plus. Square root of 81 is 9, so that's what goes here. Square root of 49 is 7. And then square root of k squared is just k. Ta-da! So those are, those are pretty fun. Don't require a whole lot of work. Okay, here's the steps when factoring the way. There we go. Okay, so first, always look for a GCF. Always look for a greatest common factor. Um, two, is it a difference of perfect squares? If so, it's what we did above. Remember, it's a squared minus b squared is really... A, I guess we'll do the minus first, like we did up there. A minus B times A plus B. And again, that's what, exactly what we just did up, up above on these. And then um, use the A times C grouping method. So here we go. Factoring perfect squares, trinomials. Fun stuff. So here's the forms. I've got A squared plus 2ab plus b squared is going to be given in the form a plus b squared. And it's because of this plus sign here. If it has a minus sign here, it's the only difference between the two, then you're just going to make it a minus b squared. And it's a little confusing with the letters. But if you look here, all we're going to do 
since it's 2 times a times b, I, I'm always going to say 8 divided by 2. So 2 times something has to give me 8. Well, 2 times 4 gives me 8. That 2 stays there. Okay. And then I also had to multiply by my x. So that's what went there. Over here I know my a term is x. I just took the square root of it, right? And then I know that my b, oops, b term, not b, sorry, c, is square root of 16, which is 4. And again, that's the same thing as this. And the x is the same as that a up there. So then when we factor it, it's going to be my variable x. There's a plus sign here. That first sign's plus, so I know that this sign here has to be plus. Whatever this number is in the middle, whatever I had to multiply goes there, squared. And that's it. So you're seeing the middle term, 2 times what, is going to be the number that goes here. Then it's just your variable, and then the plus or minus depends on what's right there. So if we look here, again, 2 times what? Well, 2 times 5 times x. I know my a term is x. My c term is 5. Take the square root. I know it's subtraction because of this sign right here. So then when I go to do it, my variable is x. I know it's subtraction because of the first sign. This number is what goes here and square it. And that's it. Okay, let's look at number nine. Same thing, 2 times what gives me 12, or 2, 12 divided by 2 gives me, is what? 6, I substitute by the x, that's how I get that term. My a term this time is square root of all of this. So square root of 4 is 2, square root of x squared is x, square root of 9 for my c term, which is, oops, 3. I know it's going to be a plus because of this sign right here. So when I go to do my answer, it's going to be, instead of just the x, I'm going to put this a here, 2x plus because of that plus sign that was up there. And then that number 6 is what goes here. Um, and I want to look at this real quick because I messed up here. Boop, boop. So remember I said this 2x, and I just put x here. It has to be 2x. So I want to go back. Let's undo. Okay. We'll start there. Sorry. Okay. So it's 2 times something times 2x this time instead of just x, sorry. And again, that 2x comes from whatever your a term is. That's where that comes from. So, well, 2 times 2 is 4, so I've got 4 times something gives me 12, which is 3. So now this 3 is what's going to come down here. And then I square it. Sorry. Let me try not to confuse y'all. So 2x plus 3 squared. So then if we look at 10, let's go ahead and do these first because they have a, 
a that's squared of one. So if we take the square root of this, a square root of 16 is four, square root of x squared is x, square root of 25 is five. So when I come down here, it's two times something times that a term, which is time it's four x. Um, so two times four is eight. So eight times something gives me 40, which is five. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. I've got a minus sign here. So I know that when I do this, I'm going to have a minus sign. This four X comes down here. The five comes down here and I square it. And there it is, four X minus five squared. Same thing with 11. Take the square root. So A equals square root of 25 is five, square root of X squared is X. Square root of four is two. Then I come down here, I've got two times something times five X. And again, five X is that A right there. So five times two is 10, 20 divided by 10 is two. So I know that two has to go there. So when I do this, I know it's gotta be subtraction because of this subtraction sign here. So I've got five X minus two squared. And there it is. And let's do number last. This one, square root of X squared, A equals just X. C equals square root of 64, which is eight. Then when I do this one, I've got two times something times just X this time. Again, cause that's what this is. So 16 divided by two or two times eight. So then when I come to write all this down, I've got X. It's a plus here, so it's gonna be a plus here. Eight, and then square it. And that's the difference of squares. Again, you can always still do your X puzzles if needed, um, but this is kind of a shortcut. So X puzzles always work for any type of factoring if you ever need to do it that way, but shortcut, there it is. Hope y'all learned something. Bye y'all, have an amazing day.